During the Fellowship of the Ring, Frodo, Sam, Merry, and Pippin found themselves at the mercy of a Barrow White in the Barrow Downs. But the Barrow Downs were not always a place of terror, and were once the heart of a beating kingdom, Cardolan, the second of Arnor's successor states. So after pouring through every possible mention I could find, we answered the question, what was Cardolan, and what ended up happening to it? In 861 of the Third Age, the northern Dúnedain kingdom of Arnor suddenly split into three successor realms, Arthedain, Cardolan, and Rudaur. Arthedain was the largest and strongest of the three realms, ruled by King Amleth, the eldest son of King Aarondir of Arnor. Rudaur was the smallest and the weakest of the three realms, being confined to the hilly lands of eastern Eriador beyond the river Mithaifel. And then there was Cardolan, the middle realm in both strength and size, mostly located in the flat, treeless land of Minhiriath. Unfortunately, there is not a lot we actually know about Cardolan. We're not sure which of Amleif's brothers became king of Cardolan, we don't know his name, we don't know the names of any of the kings, nor do we know when they ruled, or what happened to them, or how many of them there were. We don't know what the capital of Cardolan was, though many people believe it was either Tyr and Gorfad, the Sindarin name for the Barrow Downs, or the city of Tharbad on the River Guaflo. A lot of Cardolan's history is also blank, especially its early years before the arising of Angmar. So let's focus on what we do know with a bit of educated speculation here and there. Situated between the rivers Mithaithil in the east, Guaflo in the south, and the Baranduin in the west, and the Great East-West Road in the north, Cardolan was mostly located in the land known as Minhiriath. Minhiriath used to be a mostly wooded land, but these woods were destroyed during the Second Age, leaving it as a large, flat, treeless plain. That said, Cardolan still had some geographical features. The grassy hills of the South Downs, the ancient burial mounds of the Edain known as the Barrow Downs, the mysterious old forest, and far to the south, the dark woods known as Erin Vaughan. The population of Cardolan is also never definitively stated, although it can be assumed that it was smaller than Arthedain's but larger than Rudaur's. As stated by Tolkien, the Numenorean population in Arnor was always a minority, and it's no reason to think that it was any different in Cardolan. The Dúnedain population was likely centralised around certain areas, such as Tharbad, at least at first, and the aforementioned Barrow Downs. The rest of the population was made up of middle men, mostly of Haladin descent, but likely some of Baorian descent as well. These men seem to have been reasonably well integrated into Cardolan, with the exception of the isolated peoples who dwelt in Erin Vaughan. As I said earlier, Cardolan's early history is somewhat vague. We do know that the three successor kingdoms of Arnor fought over the Tower of Amansul, which contained a palantir, and the disputed territory around it, which seems to have included Bree. We don't know the number nor the severity of these conflicts, but they seem to have been serious enough that all three kingdoms continued to weaken. However, we do know that sometime before 1349 of the Third Age, the line of Isildur dies out in Cardolan, and around this time, and possibly in the centuries leading up to it, Cardolan's relationship with Arthedain begins to improve. In 1349, Argaleb I becomes king of Arthedain, and recognising that both Cardolan and Rudaur no longer have living descendants of Isildur, he claims sovereignty over the entirety of Arnor. Cardolan actually accepts, and while it remains as an independent realm, it's now ruled by a prince who seemingly recognises the king of Arthedain as a superior. On the other hand, Rudaur, which has already been infiltrated by the newly arisen Angmar, and is already under the control of the Hillmen, rejects this proposal, and in 1356, war breaks out. It's during this war where Cardolan shows its loyalty to Arthedain. Rudaur, backed by Angmar, attacks Arthedain, and although King Argaleb I is killed, Arthedain manages to hold a defensive line along the Weather Hills, the Great Road, and the Lower Mithaifel, with the support of Cardolan. That being said, Rudaur's defection to an enemy power reveals a distinct weakness for Cardolan. Whereas Arthedain is protected by the Weather Hills and the North Downs, there are no such natural barriers for Cardolan. The magnitude of this weakness is revealed in the year of 1409. An army from Angmar crosses the Mithaifel and enters Cardolan. Amansul is attacked, surrounded, and ultimately razed, and King Arvalek I of Arthedain dies in the fighting. 
With the forces of Arfidine in full retreat towards Fornost, Cardalan is wide open for the taking, and in Tolkien's own words, it is ravaged by Angmar's forces. The Prince of Cardalan, later simply known as the Last Prince, dies in the fighting. His final memories are later relived by Merry during his brief and unpleasant stay in the Barrow Downs. The Last Prince and his men are attacked during the night by the men of Khan Doom, and the Last Prince is killed when a spear pierces his heart. It's said that the remnants of the Dúnedain managed to hold out at Tyr and Gorthad and in the Old Forest, and we know that Tharbad in the south survived. But make no mistake, this was a crippling blow for Cardalan. The countryside had been laid to waste, and its army had been shattered, no new prince was chosen, and the Dúnedain had been reduced to a tiny enclave in the kingdom's northwest. Although the kingdom still existed on paper, in reality, Cardalan had merely become an extension of Arfidain. The subsequent weakening of Angmar by the Elves following the 1409 invasion gives Cardalan over 200 years to recover, but despite that, there doesn't seem to have been any attempt to properly resurrect the kingdom. Either the damage had been too severe, or the Dúnedain that remained no longer wielded the strength or authority to properly reclaim the vast plains of Minhiriath. In the end, it didn't really matter, because in 1636, the Great Plague struck. The Great Plague proved to be the true end of Cardalan. Carried up the north-south road, where it presumably reached Tharbad, the Great Plague proceeded to completely annihilate those remaining men who lived in Minhiriath, leaving the land almost entirely deserted. One way or another, the plague also reached those Dúnedain survivors in the Barrow Downs and the Old Forest, effectively wiping out what remained of them. With the desertion of Minhiriath and the deaths of the remaining Dúnedain of Cardalan, Cardalan was no more. The kingdom had lasted 775 years. But the end of the Kingdom of Cardalan was not the final chapter for the land of Cardalan. To add insult to injury, the Witch King proceeded to send fell spirits out of Angmar and Rudawa to infest the Barrow Downs. These spirits proceeded to reanimate the corpses of those buried there, and they would become known as the Barrowites. The Barrow Downs, once the heart of Cardalan, would now become a place of terror and death. Unfortunately, it's the Barrowites that would stop any attempt to recolonize the lands of Cardalan, and an attempt did take place. In 1851, King Aravall of Arfidine, with the help of the Elves, manages to defeat an army from Angmar in battle in Cardalan. Eager to press his advantage, Aravall sends settlers south to resurrect the fallen lands. But this attempt fails, as the Barrowites either kill or drive them off. This robs Aravall of any chance, small though it may have been, to turn the tide against Angmar, and Arthurdine would fall to Angmar only 124 years later. Not all of Cardalan suffered such a dire fate, though. In the south, Tharbad survived as an independent town following the Great Plague. Cardalan was obviously no more, and Gondor had withdrawn its garrison to better protect its heartland. That being said, while Tharbad did survive, the town also experienced a slow, inevitable demise. Built near a marshland that was prone to flooding, the great works at Tharbad required constant maintenance. Maintenance that the remaining locals could not provide. Still, the town lasted over a thousand more years, only finally being ruined in the year 2912 after a series of devastating floods. With the exception of Tharbad, the rest of Cardalan remained mostly deserted, even until the War of the Ring. The only inhabitants were a numerous yet barbarous fisherfolk who dwelt along the shores of Minhiriath, yet they probably never considered themselves part of the ancient kingdom. And when the Nazgul passed through Minhiriath on the eve of the War of the Ring, the only men to witness them are fugitives, many of whom were spies of Saruman, and lonely hunters, who perhaps hailed from remote homesteads. But there is one who dwelt in Cardalan from the beginning, and even dwelt there to the War of the Ring. Everyone's favourite, or least favourite enigma, Tom Bombadil. Although Tom is almost always joyous and merry, his tone becomes sombre whenever he is reminded of the old kingdom of Cardalan. When he finds a blue brooch in the barrow, he says, There was she who long ago wore this on her shoulder. Over 1500 years later, and he still remembers that woman. I think it's fitting to end the video with a paragraph from The Fellowship of the Ring, where Tom describes the history of the place, a history that he witnessed. Green walls and white walls rose, there were fortresses on the heights, 
Kings of little kingdoms fought together, and the young sun shone like fire on the red metal of their new and greedy swords. There was victory and defeat, and towers fell, fortresses were burned, and flames went up into the sky. Gold was piled on the byres of dead kings and queens, and mounds covered them, and the stone doors were shut, and the grass grew over all. Sheep walked for a while, biting the grass, but soon the hills were empty again. A shadow came out of dark places far away, and the bones were stirred in the mounds. Barrowites walked in the hollow places, with a clink of rings on cold fingers, and gold chains in the wind. Stone rings grinned out of the ground, like broken teeth in the moonlight. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, or at least found it interesting. Cardalan is one of my favourite parts of Middle-earth, and as always, I wish there were more information about it. Yet I have to say that it has allowed me to appreciate the Tom Bombadil section of the books a little more, especially the language he uses when he speaks about Cardalan. If you want more Cardalan, late last year, Lord of the Rings Online actually added the region to the game, and although it's non-canon, it's interesting all the same. Cheers, farewell, and remember, choose cremation if you don't want to be a Barrowite.